is it ever quiet? Are we ready? Okay, I'd like to call to order the uh, special meeting study session for July 11th, 2006. Uh, roll call, please. The record will reflect that council members Rosansky and Ridgeway are absent, and Ridgeway is excused. Yes, Mr. Rosansky will be here shortly. Uh, the first item is clarifications of items on the consent calendar. Uh, Mr. Curry, do you have any? Uh, no items, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Selledge? I have none. Council Member Daigle? Uh, none, Mayor Webb. Council Member Nichols? Through item number 10. Plus item, special item 16. I would like to explain that the session, what I, item 4 is, and, and uh, maybe discuss whether we should have a, if we're going to have a statute that we have it to all the service members instead of just one of the panels. I understand we've adopted. Okay, so you're going to ask that that be removed for discussion? Yeah. Okay. Anything else? about a clarification item? Can, can the Public Works Director comment why uh, this uh, contract is being amended? Which item is that? Number it's item five, five. Newport Coast Community Center Amendment Number 2 to the Professional Services Agreement for Pacific Soils Engineering. Yes, uh, Mr. Mayor and members of Council, uh, it's, it's my understanding that when we originally awarded the project, we, we neglected to um, hire uh, services for some geotechnical uh, that were inadvertently omitted and this is we're just bringing this back to you to get approval for those additional services and, and this is a firm that we have used since 2002 as a uh, on an as-needed basis to do various different projects that, that needed soils testing for construction processes that's correct and they were also involved in the original uh, geotechnical testing uh, from, from during the design process as well Okay, thank you. Does that clarify your Well, I think it is uh, some survey, but it also includes planting also. That, that's correct. The city manager is correct in that. There is a bit of planting, most of it's the survey. But I, I, is this for purposes of that, or are we establishing fields that uh, are going to be planted in the future? Well, we continue to try to establish fields that we will be planted in the future away from people's stocks so that they can be used as mitigation locations for dredging beneath people's stocks. I, I think, in general, it's a good idea. I, Thank you. Uh, any other items? I had one other one, and that is on the, we're doing an undergrounding on item nine. I think that's still in the consent. And uh, the undergrounding is in an area that we talked about uh, uh, somewhat rezoning of that in the general plan. If we did, would the lot stay the same and this be usable, or is this going to be something that uh, should be postponed slightly until we find out whether we're going to stay relatively in that configuration or not? This is the read about, I mean, the uh, undergrounding district is one that's really between uh, Riverside and, and Tustin. Uh, you have the Mariner's Mile Square. 
but a substantial portion of it is single family residential houses that are already in existing that that's probably close to two thirds of it. And as far as the rezoning is concerned, uh, I don't believe that uh, uh, any new uses would substantially change the property lines to impact the undergrounding. So uh, if the district goes ahead and, and uh, based on my past experience, uh, with undergrounding districts, I just I, I, I can't imagine that that would be significantly impacted. My question was, what were you trying to you know, talk about a higher density of residential being allowed in approximately that area? Is that an area that that would happen and then that may end up to be apartments yeah. instead of apartments? The, the higher density residential is to the east of here. Yeah, so it's not really in this area. Thank you very much. Uh, okay. Thank you. Mr. Uh, Rosansky, did you have any items on the consent calendar that you were concerned with? None, thank you. Thank you. Then we are now ready for our presentations. It says Bill Ficker's presentation, but I think really what we're here today is to talk about the site north of the library because I believe that there will be a presentation from more than just Bill Ficker related to that. I think the people that uh, there are some individuals that wish to talk a little bit about uh, the proposed park site too. But we will start off with Mr. Vickers' presentation on uh, a potential city hall site at uh, Northerly of the Library, Central Library. Uh, thank you, Mayor Webb. I appreciate being here today and uh, I'm a little nervous because I don't make these presentations anymore and I don't have a dog and pony show but I uh, can project the presentation up on the screen and I hope that's helpful. I'd like to uh, go through this. It uh, is a culmination of about eight months of work from when I started and got to really into the project. But I can't cover that uh, quickly. But uh, I'll try to summarize everything as quickly as I can and uh, then answer any questions. Uh, you have my resume, you know my background in planning and uh, my avocation of management and organization, uh, which uh, was a large part of my work. I will, in my office at on uh, 30th Street, 417 30th Street, uh, have a display of what you see here today, including the correspondence that's taken place with the City Council. Uh, starting in October and that might be interesting for uh, any council people or anybody in the audience in the future to come in and look at. Uh, I'm there most of the time and I'd be happy to explain anything to anyone who has that level of interest. Uh, I have a update which I'll give to the City Council at the completion of my presentation, and I won't give it to you now because I don't want you reading it there while I'm giving my presentation. I know how that happens having sat in board meetings. But uh, I do have that, and it reflects my kind of final recommendation, and that's in response to a lot of questions I've had uh, over the last couple of months with regard to the project. As you know, I have no interest, and I want to be clear, architecturally or professionally in this project. This is strictly, I'm donating this time to the city and uh, for obvious reasons of wanting to seek some excellence in our city planning and in our spending. I am opposed to we've got to get started if, even if we're in the wrong direction. I know all of you don't agree that you're going in the wrong direction, but I uh, hope that after this presentation that we can stand back and perhaps uh, take a look at what we've done. I think the money you've spent to date in, uh, is the probably the best money spent because a lot of the work we did over the years, we did to show what we shouldn't do, perhaps, rather than what we should do. And most corporations, after you've gone through a planning and you find out something doesn't work, that's worthwhile to spend that money to find out what perhaps you shouldn't do. Um, my first uh, interest in this came about 
excuse me, I'm not accustomed to this. Um, I was concerned about the operations and uh, did some analysis of the building department, the planning department, and public works department and coordination and work. And uh, that uh, uh, was an eye opener because I found that there was no scheduling and coordination of the individual permits and so forth. I had the opportunity to put a job through and I kept careful notes and many times the uh, project would be ready to pick up through building and there was uh, planning didn't know they had the job or public works didn't know they had the job or even claimed they didn't get it. And so that was uh, kind of discouraging. Uh, the other thing that I noticed and of course was well published were the offices with things stacked under a table like this as far back as you could see. And that seemed to me to be a housekeeping issue and perhaps there was a lot of dead storage there that could have been almost anywhere. But the uh, offices were jammed and I think probably some quite legitimately that things got carried in there that couldn't be done. So there were some indications that uh, uh, schedules weren't, couldn't be kept. And then the second issue was the one of uh, personnel schedules, the flex work week and so forth. When people go in and uh, on a late Wednesday, the person they have to see is out on Friday in the building department, the person they have to see is out on Monday in the planning department. So our people that we're serving have to get their work done between Tuesday morning and Thursday night. I know even in your in internal functions, it's sometimes necessary, you can't put a meeting together on a Friday or a Monday. But uh, that kind of triggered my looking at the operations. Um, and uh, so that led me to, uh, then when I heard that the city council was, or you set on building the, uh, the uh, city hall on this site, I started looking at the process of planning and space requirements and so forth. And I didn't, to this day, find anything that referenced the processes that were taking place in the city hall. The reports I saw were just space planning and uh, those are rather standards for BOMA and so forth that were being pursued. Um, and that then led me to looking at the city hall plans and uh, to see if the city hall really should be here uh, in the first place. Obviously, if you're looking at a city hall to serve the entire city, the first thing you'd look at would be where it should be, just geographically. And the city hall now on the map on the, whoop, map on the wall, oh, I can, yeah, there we go, it's right about here. And so I started looking at the center of the city, and of course it was no surprise that it's near Newport Center. And, uh, a parcel of property above the library is a rather long, I think it's 1,500 feet long parcel of land. And I'll address that in a moment. It seemed to be the city hall and thought maybe there's an opportunity to place the city hall, or as I called it, probably self-servingly, city hall on the green. And uh, maybe there could be some opportunity to cooperate and uh, make that park into a usable park, but also make it into a delightful city hall uh, location. Uh, building uh, public buildings on public property is uh, certainly uh, done often, and we have some examples right here in Newport Beach, like the Muth Center, the uh, uh, lifeguard station by the pier, and more recently, the uh, new, I think just started, laboratory building up in Shellmaker Island. We also have rowing clubs and so forth, and they're all, I believe, on public property. But I think there has to be a benefit for everybody, and the whole purpose of this is 
the maximum number of people that it can serve without compromising uh, anybody ideally, but hopefully the very fewest. And that was the purpose of my uh, uh, getting involved and trying to seek a site. Secondly, I think in today's society, you wouldn't put the city hall here under any circumstances if you walked into the city and it was a vacant piece of property. You wouldn't think to put the city hall here for a lot of reasons, but just for disaster and preparedness. Uh, a city hall, in case of any kind of catastrophe, has to be accept, accessible and operating under almost any circumstances. There's a lot better chance that that would happen. I wish I knew how to turn this. No. Whoop. Uh, there's a lot better chance that that would happen in the uh, location in Newport Center than here. Uh, all you'd have to do would even have the highway bridge collapse and you'd have a very difficult time getting away from here. The other thing, of course, is the uh, access for people from outside of town, contractors, and all the people in the city uh, to, uh, to the site to best serve the people. Is, excuse me. Sorry. Uh, so um, that indicates the center and the, the parcel that I uh, propose we consider for the city hall. Um, I made some comments in my first report uh, after the couple of correspondence, and that was with regarding architecture. But that is down the line to the only reason I said that was a philosophy that I don't believe that the city of Newport Beach needs a monument, and I hope we don't try to bring in elements of sailboats and all into the architecture. I thought a constrained architecture, more sophisticated architecture, might be what we should have. There was no intent to design the building because some people indicated that uh, they didn't like my building. <laughs> I don't remember designing one. so. Uh, what I um, did, excuse me, next is I took a uh, look at the city hall plan and uh, from that uh, critically looked at the exchange of property and so forth and uh, Notice that uh, the yellow line here is the existing city hall property line with the parking behind the city hall and all. And uh, the red is the new city hall line, property line, I guess, call it for the moment. And this yellow, uh, they're now on the city hall uh, property, there's an easement for the neighboring market. This line, and right here, it should also have been yellow. That is the extent of the fire station property, and this area back here belongs to the market. So the exchange of property uh, is very close and uh, proper there where the market takes that property and we get this piece of property here and erase the easement. But all it really did was move the easement over a little bit and uh, the fire station still has to use this part and so we don't gain much by giving up that easement and I, I worry that perhaps it was treated as property that was owned by the neighbor. But the most startling thing about this are two things about this plan. The uh, number one, the fire station is uh, jammed in this area back here, and I believe inadequate for access and so forth. 
perhaps barely acceptable. I think it's about 0.8 acres, and I believe that is not uh, by any standard adequate for a fire station. However, uh, the thing that amazed me is that the entrance off of Finley Street, that in planning our city hall, we're saying that it is not a needed entrance for the city hall property, except for the trash truck. And that becomes the exclusive entrance for the market property. It's hard to believe that uh, we could come up with that conclusion if, in fact, this property is adequate to support the city hall. Uh, there are a couple of uh, questions about my plan or a concept, and that was that uh, the it's an awfully long plan, the building I expressed on my uh, plot plans, and that uh, people would need a sedgeway to get around. And uh, that's not a bad idea. However, this building is only 24 feet shorter than the building I propose. And uh, this is a two-story building, so you'd have to take your sedgeway upstairs. So I think my one story is more efficient. <laughs> or take the elevator. Uh, to move on, I've tried to address uh, as many things as possible. And I think you should address everybody's concern. But I know we can't satisfy everybody, but perhaps we can satisfy the community. So I've tried to provide opportunities and uh, recognize that the uh, opportunity of one person uh, may not be acceptable to another. I would like to say that I do think the avocado site is the best site. Uh, there was a reason why there it was determined that the library should be at the center of town. There were some very astute business people who thought the Chamber of Commerce building should be at the center of town. And I think probably the Irvine Company guessed that as well. Um, next, I started looking at the park plans. And uh, I have some the re part of the rest of the park plan here. And I felt that maybe this was an opportunity to help the parks as well as the uh, siting the city hall there. Uh, if this is a, a view park, I, I know it isn't a neighborhood park uh, because, uh, number one, there is no access provided to it, practical access to get people to it. And like the old tree falling in the forest, is there a sound if nobody's there? Is there a view if nobody's in the park? And I think the object of a community park is to get people into the park. And I thought how nice it might be to share that park with the city hall in this area with all of our employees. Uh, there must be some advantage in having the city hall and the library together because you can share uh, parking and event parking and so forth. And also, in looking at this plan, the real only access for automobiles to this park is right in this area here. You can't read this too well, but I put some elevations on this drawing, and these are from the survey. Um, this location, driveway here, and parking is essentially as shown at 135, and that's the that's above sea level. And that is an elevation here, 135, at the library floor, and at this generally uh, slight slopes in the parking, but as you know, parking areas can't slope very much. Uh, this intersection here is about 165, the high point is up here in this general area of about 192. This area here is 180, and this area here is 170. There's a little amphitheater shown here, and there is a trail going right up here, a ramp with flat areas every so often. Uh, 
this area here is 180. And that area here and this here are about even. I'll show you a picture uh, taken from up here. This is at 200, this is 205, and this is 210. This is 205, 200, and 195. So these areas here all look over this area. The only access that I see is into here off of Farallon. And I've avoided getting into whether it helps to turn on or off from MacArthur and access and so forth because that's another issue. We're not there yet. And uh, I think we have to look at the simple issues first. Um, when I say there's no access, uh, I think people with special needs and handicap and so forth, or even older people or families with picnics have to have a way to get to the park. From here up to this point where the path ends, the elevation changes 35 or 6 feet, and that is the floor of a four-story building. Uh, that's a long way up, especially with a ramp. The ramp shown here is only 360 or 70 feet, as I recall, and that's a 10% slope. So it, it, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, on, the, on the plan that I showed, uh, concept plan for the development in this area, I showed parking of about 80 cars. And uh, oh, uh, let me go back here just a second. These are views taken from the uh, th uh, three spots that I've shown. Here, here, or see that probably here, here, and from uh, either this spot or this spot. And I suspect this spot. You can see that uh, culvert in these two pictures here, right there and right there. And that's the culvert that is right here. So you're looking from here and here uh, down this way toward the ocean, right across the site where I would propose putting the city hall. This bluff, this ridge you see here, going down to, this is the signal right here. You can see the signal there and right here, approximately, at Farallon. And that ridge is this ridge right here, of about 180 to 192. The proposal I have is that the entire city hall at this point here would be about between 12 to 14 feet below that line. So you'd look straight across the city hall from anywhere, uh, even from here at 180, that would be about elevation of your feet would be the city hall roof and the same way at this point here. So those are the views I'm talking about. That is that ridge, and the city hall roof would be about even with the grade there, and about 14 feet below the grade up at this point. We would pre in, well, let me go on with the next plan here, if I can remember. I'll go ahead here just to give you a feel of what we're talking about. Uh, there's some question, of course, about how much parking the park would need. And uh, if the park said they didn't, I think the park should have parking in the center as close to access both ways as possible. But that's debatable, and uh, I think we should always question those things. You could keep the trails that the park shows up through here 
And uh, if we wanted to connect around the city hall, we could do that. There's a lot of options. This is a concept. I showed a footprint only of a one-story building, and there's an opportunity you could put partially two-story, if there's some reason for it, to get a view. And I'm not trying to build a view where employees would sit all day and look out the window at all. But you certainly, if you stand up or maybe even sitting at your desk, uh, you would be looking across all these buildings here, and we would not be high enough, of course, to look across the library because it's up at the view plane. Uh, it, I didn't have to be told by anybody because of past experience that people that live on a hillside above something are considered, uh, are very concerned about the view. And we've totally respected that view and have uh, uh, would remove quite a bit, uh, a lot of dirt here, about 130,000 yards for to lower this uh, building, the city hall building, and to put the parking structure in here. So if you have a good idea of how this fits on the site now, I'd like to go back to the plan and cross section. Uh, this is a plan, and it's shown on the topo maps, and uh, the uh, parking structure would step down this area here and uh, in order to get down to city hall level. Uh, we would retain the berm all along uh, MacArthur Boulevard, and when you drive down MacArthur Boulevard, it will look just like it does now. And when you get to this point where those pictures were taken, instead of looking at this bluff here, you would see directly across the city hall out toward the ocean. Uh, maybe you'd see the back end of the library, but I don't think so because the top of it is at 170, I believe. Now, there's a couple of sections I've taken. Oh, incidentally, these are the view planes. That is 180. This is 185. 190 and 195. And the building is below all these view planes, getting within a couple of feet here and being about uh, 12 feet below the view plane here. And uh, so I've been totally uh, responsive to that. This is a section taken through the building from east to west. This is MacArthur Boulevard. This is the top of that berm. And this is the city hall. And this is Avocado Avenue. This is a section taken from north to south. And this would be the library over here. This is the parking structure. This would be the city hall. And uh, my reason for Suggesting a one-story city hall is, of course, it fits best on here, although back in this area, we, if people wanted to have a two-story, but I'm not in favor of that. There have been a lot of suggestions about planting the roof and so forth, but that's also, I believe, down the line. There are a lot of cost benefits in doing a one-story building uh, and doing a building other than on this site. Many of them have been discussed, and there are many of them are, are quite obvious. Number one, a single-story building has a lot of flexibility. Footings are easy to do. It's quick to design. You don't have elevators and maintenance and uh, issues like that. You can have some beautiful atriums in the building. You could raise a floor in an area to have a, a, an employee's lounge or whatever you want to do in order to get a little better view. And. Uh, so you can respond to those kind of issues. Uh, we do provide a library link over here. And I, I believe you'd want to do that to have a path over to the library for the benefit of the library people that want to walk the site or uh, uh, people from the city hall that want to go to the library. The, there'd be a tremendous benefit to not interrupting the, the city hall functions for a couple of years, and you will interrupt them for a couple of years. You're not going to build any 
tear that down this city hall and build a new one in 12 months or so. It's just unrealistic to be that optimistic, especially in today's arena. Um, not having to move is a huge issue. To go out and find places to put this city hall function is, uh, will be an extremely expensive and time consuming and distraction to all of the staff. But if you think that's bad, where do you put a fire station? You can't go out and rent one of those for a couple of years. And that's going to be a very difficult issue to have a fire station uh, close by down here. I mentioned in doing this uh, because somebody, and uh, it wasn't anybody I talked to, but in conversation, somebody said, oh, good, if we do this plan, we can sell the city hall property and uh, pay for the city hall. So in my report to you, I said in a free city hall. Well, that had a nice ring to it. But uh, in fact, uh, a lot of people said, well, we don't need a new city hall. The important thing is to get it in the right place and have the proper city hall. And uh, so I uh, pretty much agree with that. The one other benefit that I want to go back to, and I may have mentioned it earlier, was the fact that I think if we build a city hall on this property, we can incorporate the cost of really doing the park correctly. And I think this community uh, could be a hallmark expression of how to use native landscaping. And what a better spot to have people see it than around your city hall than to have a really healthy native landscape city hall with trails and all around it. I think you'd have everybody to come to see what else Newport Beach has done well. One, before I move on, there's just a couple more slides. One other thing I want to express is, and I hope there isn't too much of an urgency to build the park just because we're looking at it, or I'm looking at it at this point as a potential site to include the city hall. But the, this plan, by my calculations, in, indicates the removal of about 35,000 yards of dirt. That is a major concern in a park plan, not so much in the city hall plan because of the magnitude of the overall project. If you look at this elevation, 135, and you go in the library, there's a very steep bluff that comes up here to 155. Then it goes from here to 180. And, if, and this would have to be at roughly 135, and then this slopes back. If you put parking in here, uh, no matter how you do it, just about, depending on the size of the parking area, but I think you'd, for a park this size, you'd want at least 30 or 40 cars for park use. And uh, you'd have to remove about another, I think, 18,000 yards for a total to make this park into a usable park, uh, assuming that you do the library parking as well, uh, would remove about 50,000 yards or 52,000 yards, which is about a third of what we plan to do on the library site. I mean, on the if we put the city hall in this location. This was a, in uh, my presentation in, uh, that you have a copy of, and this is what I was speaking of earlier. Uh, I don't want to get into architecture, but I merely said that if this building is good enough for a multi-billion dollar company and uh, a one-story building to operate part of their operations in, uh, it was designed by a world-famous architect, Bill Pereira, with a world-famous architect, uh, or rather sculptor, Tom Van Sant. I thought the building, and I just superimposed that building here with the MacArthur Bluff in the back of it, why uh, maybe it would be a nice place to uh, have the history of Newport Beach in these panels. And uh, that kind of building with natural sandblasted panels 
would fit in well with a uh, park environment. Now, I have a proposal that takes all of this and summarizes it, and I think I'm about on schedule. Uh, the, I would propose the site that I just described for the city hall, basically as I described it. And the proposal is, and it's not my idea, it came from people, that the idea came, not, I couldn't make a deal, unfortunately, but from people that would basically be opposed to this, using this site, uh, park site, uh, to include the city hall. And that is, if we are using a part of this park site, we should not uh, sell the site here, because that is just sort of a, a way of selling public property. And I think I agree with that. So the proposal I have is to trade and, and uh, what I did here was take the city hall site, we don't have to move any property lines or anything, make this into an urban park. I would keep this council chamber as a community room or community meeting space. I would keep the lobby of the city hall and the tower. And that would uh, memorialize the city hall and its location and add some paving. And I would, if I were doing this on my own, I'd put a Pete's Coffee Shop in there and make this into a beautiful uh, urban park for uh, art walks and those kinds of activities. It also opens this up for an appropriate fire station, not jamming the fire station over into a tiny corner here, which is inappropriate. I didn't try to get into planning that area here, but I'm sure there's always need for parking, and it could even be justified parking for the park here and taking away some parking here and making more green space. Uh, obviously, it would be a waste of time at this point to get into talking about parking cars or how, how many cars you need for the park or the activities that might take place. But I would uh, submit to you that this could be very viable for the entire community, both from a cost standpoint, from the uh, lack of intrusion into the next two years of operating the city hall and uh, and concern I think for everybody which I've tried to uh, express in any of the planning I've done to date. I think it could be an opportunity to unify the city be, behind having a first class park, first class city hall and a first class second par urban park on the peninsula. Um, I think we could work together to do this. I know there's an urgency now for this uh, council to get a city hall built because it's been five years in the planning and there have been a lot of delays. But uh, I don't feel what you have now is a good plan. It's going to be extremely expensive. It's going to be uh, affect too many people in the uh, operation of the city hall. But uh, most importantly, I think whatever we do, we should pursue excellence for our city. And what I see being pursued now is not excellence or an orderly uh, pursuit. I'm willing to volunteer more of my time. I'd like to be helpful. And uh, my intent, as you know from my original letter, was not to be a critic, but to express uh, concerns to be addressed in a professional manner. Uh, and if we somewhat agree, and I would hope maybe all of us agree, even including the city council on this point, is that if we put it up to a vote, it will satisfy a lot of people that uh, will have the entire community will have an opportunity to vote on it. And I think it could be presented in a pretty simple manner 
and uh, I would ha be happy to help pursue that. Uh, I have, I'll give these reports to you. Uh, I've got about 10 of them here. So they ex they're a summary of my recommendation and you have all of the other letters that I've written and uh, reports uh, and follow-ups. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you'd have, or if you're tired of hearing me, I'll be happy to, you can call me. <laughs> thank, thank you a lot, uh, Bill. I would like to give the council an opportunity to ask a few questions. Uh, does anybody want to start off? Uh, Mr. Mr. Curry. Uh, thank you, Bill. That was an excellent presentation. I appreciate you coming down here and putting this together for us. As I understand the, uh, the budget for your facility, the, the cost of excavation and grading is somewhere upwards of $2 million. Is that what it would take to move the 157,000 cubic yards of soil to, to prep the site? Let me, uh, I don't want to go from memory, but you probably have in front of you my magnitude of cost, uh, yeah, I think so. I have it here just a moment. Yeah, I have grading here at $2 million, yes, mm -hmm. 157,000 cubic yards at $15 a yard. And in thinking about prepping for the site, have you considered costs that may be involved with either endangered species or other specific mm -hmm. environmental mitigations that would no. be required here? No, I haven't considered that at all. And as I understand the design of the site, and, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think your position is, is that the design is flexible. It can be whatever you want it to be. It could be one I, story. It could be built I, into the hill. It could be two stories. It could be... Yeah. What I tried to uh, express is a practical, straightforward mm -hmm. design that reflected or met the requirements of the view plane and mm -hmm. simplicity. And I'm kind of a minimalist, so mm -hmm. I like to see things done in a fairly straightforward way because the more you complicate them in design, the less you control the costs. Right. So if you start digging in and building basements, number one, you get spaces that aren't very pleasant. And uh, I wanted to have light all the way around the building and keep it simple. So mm -hmm. I, I have no the design of the building, the architecture, is the next step for something right. else. Could be, it could be something different, but, oh, but it's but it's flexible. Yeah, I have no, uh, it could be something very different. Right. I and just expressed the philosophy. Uh -huh. so. And to understand, for the people at home, sort of the magnitude of the size of the building, it's, as I look at it, it's something on the order of, you know, just under 300 yards or 300, 300 feet, feet each side, roughly about the distance of a football field, maybe a little shorter. By about, it's about 300 by 200. 300 by 200, yeah. okay. Uh, thank you. Anybody else? All right, I have a question. Uh, why don't you put your site plan back yes. up? What uh, square footage were you, you figuring at for oh, you mean the, uh, for the city hall site? That's plan there. That that's fine. Okay. What, what square footage were you figuring oh, for the footprint? What I actually show here is sixty-eight thousand square feet. Mm -hmm. The uh, Magnitude, as I understood it, of the city hall is about 70,000, give or take a couple. So I, I still think in a building this size, why it was worthwhile fooling around to try to get a couple thousand square feet. If you were to, to take this portion here and make that two-story to where you went down into the ground and excavated this out farther, again, more excavation, but you could have an outside uh, edge facing avocado in the library, uh, uh, do you think that, is that a feasible design? I, you know, there's a, a huge amount of flexibility, but I would hesitate to get into, uh, into uh, reflecting on that, because when you start to excavate and having a building stepping down a grade, you get retaining walls and dark places in the back of the building. That's not necessarily bad, but those would be details of, that would re, be reflected by the operation. One thing that might provide that would be if you wanted to step down, you'd probably go back here and build an, an atrium that went down 
two floors. There'd be a two-story atrium, and that would give light from these offices here, and uh, it could be, you know, there's tremendous opportunities <laughs> to do things here. And also, from this area where you're well below the site, really we wouldn't have to raise it, because I showed the building 20 feet high purposely, so it'd give you an opportunity to have a, a slightly higher floor in an area here if you wanted to and still respect the site planes and all. Uh, there's a, all the flexibility in the world you'd like. Or if you don't need all this parking here, which I think is excessive for the city hall, but I put it there primarily for uh, the best access for the park, you could run this road in here like this uh, I think it's important to get a, uh, some parking area in this area to get people up to, to the park. And uh, I, I guess one of the reasons why I was suggesting yeah. something in here is you could have a smaller footprint uh, yeah. to where you could move exactly. the parking in and you could end up That's getting That's exactly right. You could dueling. do things. You could make the smaller footprint. If okay. you so desire, I was trying to take the most simplistic way and, and not have anybody come back and say, well, you just showed a little footprint, but it's not really practical. So okay. I, Another item is that, that one of the comments that I've heard is that we have a wonderful view from up there, and if we put the city hall on the site, that view goes away. Uh, I, I've, I've mentioned this before to several people, but if we were to take and make an an urban park on the roof up there to where you could have planters and and uh, spaces that pedestrians could use would uh, would that significantly increase the construction costs uh, to get either an elevator up there or stairs or ramps well, or whatever uh, there are a couple of things I've had a couple of very well-known architects comment and suggest that there ought to be a turf roof and access up there and so forth Again, I tried not to get into the design of the building and uh, establish some priorities. And ultimately, when you talk about the design of the building and the priorities, they're going to get involved in costs. And you'll say, how many people are going to go up there? And is it worth the cost of the elevator and things like that? So uh, I think the important, we will be, there's a path shown in the uh, I, well, yeah, in the park plan, and w we can also reconfigure this slightly to, in to include a path here, just as the park plan shows, to get up to the maximum height, which will be way above the city hall for the park visitors. But you have to get people up there. And if you, and that means getting cars up to, uh, about a 180 elevation or something like that. So they're up there at the view plane. It's interesting that uh, the pictures that are I uh, showed, uh, these pictures here were taken from the higher spot and that they weren't taken from the area that we're trying to preserve as a view plane. And sometimes those things tell more of a story than we realize. Whoever went out there to depict the wonderful views and all of the park uh, actually took the pictures from from this area here and not from there. And probably because it was very difficult to get up here. There's no place to park, as there, there'll be a place to park down here, but it's not gonna make it a lot easier to get up there. So those are little things, they're not, I wouldn't debate them with anybody because they, I think they have, what you're saying has validity, and there's a, you hit right on it. I think there are a lot of opportunities to do something to serve everybody in the community and perhaps people with fairly strong and different viewpoints. Okay, any other council members have any questions? Councilmember Daigle? Uh, I appreciate the time and the thought that 
that you put into this. And I know I heard the presentation earlier today. And I think one of the, the benefits of your presentation is it raises questions about the suitability of this site. So I, I wanted to thank you about for coming in and, and for all the information that you developed on this. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Councilman McCurry. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Bill, one quick question. It looks like yeah. there's about 300 spaces there, parking spaces between the two lots. Is that more or less correct? Uh, that's correct, yes. And they're all accessing the site off of Avocado and Farrell on there. Is that correct? Uh, uh, no, they're, of avocado, right? they're both accessible in one way or another. This, obviously, if somebody parks in this area, I think you'd have to assume that they would come in and, mm -hmm. act and exit at Fairlawn. Uh, people could come into the parking structure uh, through the back door here, just as is anticipated, mm -hmm. uh, or they could come through the library parking lot down this way as I believe the park plan shows, and enter the parking structure, mm -hmm. and then ramp up to this area here. The, uh, this, there would be ramps, and I didn't try to get into the design of the parking structure. It could be a warped, a plain parking structure, or ramps that I'm more familiar with. Right. But this would be a fairly easy parking structure to get up to. And I would not expect you to have them, but I'll ask, do you, do you have a sense as to the traffic counts that no. would be uh, related to this site? Uh, no, the, uh, I haven't done any traffic analysis at all. I think the, your intuition would probably tell you that if you were trying to do something for traffic in Newport Beach, you'd rather have the city hall on that site than here. And that's just what we call by inspection. So. Bill is one of our 80,000 traffic engineers that lives in Newport Beach. Isn't that correct? <laughs> yeah. Uh, there, I said that was the end, but I missed something here, and I uh -oh. think it deserves an uh, uh, answer because I had some questions. I, I talked to the one about uh, building on city land, addressed that, or selling land, and uh, but there's been a question about water on the site, and I just want to express that because there, apparently there's water and dampness in the basement of the, of the library. But again, uh, your question about the traffic, by inspection, you, would ne you wouldn't guess or any professional would be concerned in looking at this site that there would be water that would uh, provide, that would be any problem for construction. Uh, there are buildings built below the water table all over this town, I mean, and I truly mean water table. Uh, dampness from irrigation and all runs down to the low spot. If you have a basement ar around your house, you'll, you've got to waterproof it and have a sump. Uh, in Irvine Terrace, all the houses, as the terraces down, had dampness around their footings and all until they put in a drain around it. Normally, if there's a problem of dampness in a basement or around a building, it's due to design or improper waterproofing or drainage. Uh, this site is at the top of a hill, and very seldom does water accumulate toward the top of a hill, and you don't see water running out of the side of the hill down on Avocado or up on MacArthur or even on the bluff down toward the uh, library. I so think it, it isn't a something that would pop into your mind and say, we had incidentally, I was involved in the conversion of Granville, and we had dampness, and there was a rumor that there was a river running underground by Granville, and of course we found exactly what I'm talking about, is that uh, when the, it was dug away, there were no drains or proper waterproofing or anything, and uh, that's been resolved. Well, I believe um, that you, did you mention that the, the uh, library parking lot was about elevation uh, 134? 135. 135. Well, the basement where they're having water problems is about 15 feet below that. Oh. And so that that's at elevation about 120, which is going to be at least 40 feet lower than even a 
if you had a second story facility so that I don't I would tend to agree with you that the water problems that you might have in there are not going yeah. to it certainly occur. wouldn't be something that a group of professionals would look at and say uh, be concerned about there was one other okay well we, okay we need to move forward because I think there's some other people that would like to make a presentation about what I'd like to do is, is I, I was requested to allow somebody to talk about the park process, and then I think that what we can do after that is is receive comments on whatever we've presented, and then uh, the council can give guidance if that's all right with the council. Does that seem to be okay? Who is going to represent? Oh, uh, oh okay. excuse me. There was just one last thing, and this okay. is just a reference, and I'm sorry. Uh, Somebody asked to show approximately the portion of land if if we look at it as a trade. Okay. And if I go back to this, can I get a little dim there? So, dimmer. I took this portion in order to be. I didn't want to come up and say yes, you've included the fire station or anything. But I said this is the park. Or I guess this area here, yeah, because we can do away with the parking, whatever you want to do. But generally, this is the area. And I put that into a rectangle and overlaid it on the plan, which you saw earlier. And that is this cutout piece of cardboard here. So you can see that it's a pretty good nominal trade, land for land. And that's what I was wanted to express. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Who is going to make the presentation, uh, Debbie? Ms. Allen? <laughs> or Marie? Good afternoon, Mayor and members of the Council. Um, as the Mayor just said, we were asked to make a presentation on the park and the planning process. Um, in 2004, the Council um, approved an agreement with Hall and Foreman to begin concept development plans for this area as an open space park. Um, and they began their work after some extensive community outreach processes. And this afternoon, we've asked Mark Reeder from Hall and Foreman to come and give you an overview of the concept plan that currently exists for the park. Um, and then after that, I believe members of the Parks Commission and Beaches and Recreation Commission would like to say a few words. Um, but I do want to state that Mr. Reeder is not here to comment on Mr. Ficker's plan because he just saw the plan as, as the rest of us did, but he's just going to review the concept development and where we are today with that. And then obviously we are here to answer any questions. Thank you. Good afternoon, uh, Mayor, uh, Council Members, City Staff, and uh, Concerned Citizens. Uh, I'm Mark Reeder uh, with Hall and Foreman. I'm the uh, Civil Engineering Consultant for the Newport Center Park Project. Uh, as Marie stated, I have uh, been involved with the project uh, since July of 2004. Uh, at that time, we were retained uh, as a consultant uh, by the City of Newport Beach to take some previous illustrations uh, that were prepared for spawn and EPT for the park and uh, move that forward into uh, some uh, conceptual design plans. Uh, we also worked with uh, two other consultants, JHA Consulting, the landscape architect, and also MBA Consulting, uh, environmental consultants. Uh, neither of those are here today. <coughs> um, the uh, park uh, is divided into these areas here, the riparian wetlands areas, this north-south one, and also the riparian area that runs east-west. Uh, we've always considered uh, this portion of the park above the riparian area here to be the northern portion of the park, and of course, this area here, the southern portion of the park. Um, in our uh, current designs, uh, we have kept the coastal sage scrub 
that is in the northern portion of the park and just proposed a meandering dirt trail with accesses off MacArthur and at the corner here and also off of um, Avocado at that point for people that want to take a nature walk through the uh, existing habitat. Uh, let me go to the next slide. Our, our environmental consultant, uh, MBA, uh, prepared two reports, a wetlands delineation report and a biological assessment study. Uh, what those studies told us was where these environmentally sensitive areas are in terms of Army Corps of Engineers and California Department of Fish and Game. Uh, when we got into the design of the park, we used an avoidance scenario where we are avoiding these environmentally sensitive areas so that any construction of the park would not impact uh, the environmentally sensitive areas. And uh, again, here is just uh, some photographs of uh, those natural area habitats. And where are they on your site map? Um, <clears throat> these are located here, the, the light green area there and right here. So, Mark, are you saying that the southern portion is not in an environmentally sensitive area? Uh, that's correct. This is the, uh, some photographs of what the southern portion of the park would look like. It's a, uh, a passive park uh, with a, uh, a lawn area with concrete walkways for pedestrians and joggers to uh, enjoy the turf area. Also, uh, there are some fantastic views from uh, up on top of the bluff uh, that uh, this park was to incorporate. Uh, you'll, you'll notice from this photograph that there are trees. Uh, when we've designed the park, uh, we uh, eliminated any trees up on the upper portions of the southern area to respect the view planes for the uh, Harbor View Community Association uh, on this side of MacArthur. <clears throat> One of the features of the park would be to, uh, at several locations uh, throughout the park, we could do some private gardens where um, if a, a donor wanted to come in and create a private space, design their own garden, have a plaque, maybe it could be something in memoriam. This could uh, create some potential funding uh, for the park. One of the uh, concepts that was discussed was making the park tie into the uh, Central Library project. Uh, in this area here, we have a uh, parking lot uh, we'll continue the landscaping that's in the library parking lot around to the northern side. Uh, that parking lot would park about 104 cars. That would be for shared parking for the library as well as the park project. Uh, we also, uh, in the design, took a look at the lighting that we would use, minimal glare lighting, again, to respect the uh, neighbor's views. Uh, nighttime views and minimize glare. Uh, as uh, was mentioned earlier, from the library parking lot up to where the amphitheater is, which I'll discuss in a, a little bit here, there is a, about a 30 to 35 foot elevation difference. The design uh, is to uh, construct a slope, and that's going to be a contoured slope. We start off with a, a four to one in the center and uh, bend that around to about a two to one. In the uh, center of the slope area, four to one, we can uh, construct that with turf grass to kind of extend that park right down to the library parking lot. And then when it gets a little bit steeper, out at these edges here and here, we can do more uh, ornamental landscaping and trees. Again, the uh, trees would respect the view planes of the neighbors. Could I ask Dr. a Nicholas? question? Yeah. Yes. Um, where you're showing that parking lot, at the back of the library, you go up a 45 degree slope to get to the top. So, how much would you be removing in cubic yardage to make this park? We're going to uh, cut about 70,000 cubic yards 
and then we can reuse about 11,000 cubic yards of that cut back onto the park site to create some of the contour grading that we want to do for the uh -huh. lawn area. So 70,000 cubic yards. That's correct. But it's still a pretty, I mean, would you say it's a pretty steep walk? I mean, generally? Would someone uh, in a wheelchair be able to really wheel up there? That would not change the slope that you would have to go to go up to get to the park because you're really just presenting a flat space there at the bottom for your parking, right? Right. Okay. Let me do this. I'm going to jump to a, another slide. Okay. In terms of um, access, uh, we've got the handicapped parking stalls here. Uh, here is the, the amphitheater. Uh, at this portion of the site, uh, city staff, myself, and the landscape architect walk the site. And from this location here, it's just a fabulous view of the Pacific Ocean. And uh, on a clear day, I think we were out there in October one day, and Catalina Island was just, just in, in all its glory. But there's two ways to get up to the amphitheater. One is to take a set of stairs. Uh, that would probably be for uh, you know some fitness enthusiasts that would want to use the stairs. In terms of uh, Americans, uh, or in terms of uh, maybe a disabled person, uh, we have a ramp that would serpentine up to the amphitheater. Uh, currently, the status of the project is that uh, final engineering plans have been submitted to the city. Uh, that ramp has been designed uh, to Americans with Disabilities Act guidelines. Uh, basically what that means is we're ramping at about 8% and every 30 feet we put in a 5 foot, or I should say every 30 feet in length we put in a 5 foot landing. So under the ADA guidelines the, that ramp does meet uh, the, the federal guidelines for, for uh, someone with disabilities. So that's about a 500 foot long ramp if you have to go up 40 feet. I'm, I'm not sure of the length, but it is a distance, yes. Okay, um, that would be 80%. And, and, early, that's, and that's all the access, either the stairs or the handicap ramp? Well, to, to the amphitheater, there's also access uh, from MacArthur Boulevard, and there's also access uh, off of Avocado and Fairlawn to the southern portion. But there's no real parking there. Um, there, there is street parking on Avocado up to Fairlawn, and I believe as you go north of Fairlawn, there is some no parking uh, on Avocado at that point. But isn't, um, isn't there a fairly steep slope all along Avocado? I'm trying to visualize it. As, as, yeah, that's true. As yeah, Avocado Fairlawn. approaches Fairlawn, the elevations start to line up, match up. So. Um, from Fairlawn, you're almost, uh, there's not much of a grade right there. When you were designing this, was there consideration given to parking area off of Fairlawn? Yes. More at a level? That, that's, that's correct. Um, when we started the project, we did um, analyze bringing in a parking lot onto the park, um, and it was decided maybe for aesthetic reasons uh, for the park not to provide that parking. That parking lot could be added back in and access could be achieved. So I, it's not undoable. To just, just again, though, the present library building along the back side has about a two or three foot walk, and at that point you can almost reach out and touch the slope. Correct. And, and you have to scramble to go up the slope. So it's a, I mean, it's a 30 degree minimum, probably a 40, 45 degree slope up there. So that entire area that you're showing with parking spaces would all be cut back into that slope, very similar to what would be done to provide the, the two-story uh, parking standard, I mean parking structure that we were talking about otherwise. Yeah, yes, that's correct. Okay, so and that would be your 70,000. So any water problems that might be experienced by the uh, parking lot on the property of, of the city hall would be experienced by this as well. Um, that, that's, I'm not familiar with the uh, water problems that city hall has, so it's, it's hard. No, to I mean uh, 
the library supposedly has oh, I see. anything yeah. they have, you would be at approximately the entrance to the back of the library there, which is at the base of the building. Uh, so you would be at that base all the way across. So any, any, and which is exactly the same base that they were talking with for the parking structure of City Hall, I think. Councilman Nichols, the, the library does have a basement and that's where the water problem is. I see. It, it, it's uh, really below grade about uh, 15 feet. So that, uh, let, let's proceed uh, on sure, the uh, I just, presentation. I uh, would, would like to just add a quick note that uh, with the design of the parking lot, uh, and, and again the plans are in final engineering, we've provided adequate slope to that parking lot and added a, a storm drain system in that parking lot with catch basins to collect water. Um, this is the concept for the amphitheater. It's uh, terraced seating with, with turf. Uh, the amphitheater that we have designed for the site uh, would hold about 80 to 100 people. Again, this provides some connectivity to the library. Uh, the library could have um, outdoor, uh, use this outdoor amphitheater for any of their uh, various functions. Um, you could also maybe set up chairs if the city wanted to give a permit maybe for a small wedding or something like that. Would you that. really be able to have trees of that magnitude and still stay out of the no, site plane? No, the, the trees we have proposed are umbrella trees. This photograph was taken by our landscape architect and this amphitheater is in Dana Point, I believe, uh, at a park there. So the, the trees, again, that we have around the amphitheater would respect the view planes to the neighbors. What is what are the elevations of the amphitheater? The uh, amphitheater is probably at about 165, 170. This would be the bottom of it or the top? This the because the it one, runs up to the grassy knoll above, right? Uh, correct. The the bottom. This the circle that you see right there would be the bottom area here. Oh, I, I'm certain. I, I really meant the natural amphitheater that was created in the back that had some possibility of uh, use as a park amphitheater. I mean, it's that's pretty big, and it looks like it would be a beautiful uh, spot for large concerts, maybe three, four hundred people or something. Well, that, that's that's true. There, uh, there is some slope uh, built behind the amphitheater. Uh, no, northerly, I the amphitheater. Let me just mention and go to the next slide. That uh, there's a proposed arbor structure here. So maybe a disadvantage to the arbor structure would be that if people are sitting behind it, it might block views down to the stage below. Uh, but the amphitheater is designed to give some, uh, or the arbor structure is designed to give some shade uh, and uh, an aesthetic look to the uh, amphitheater. Um, again, from the uh, landscape architect's point of view, he's carrying the, de the look of the design of the library up to the amphitheater and into the arbor structure. That appears to uh, be the end of the slideshow. Um, I'm really here to uh, answer any questions that anybody may have regarding the uh, design of the park. Councilman McCurry. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. What is the nature of the um, sensitive habitat that we have in the northern end of the park? Can you sort of describe that for us, please? Um, the the nature of the habitat um, is uh, protected wetlands. Uh, in terms of the, the animal species and the plant species, uh, that's in the environmental reports. Um, and I wish I had my environmental consultant with me today to better answer that. Councilmember uh, Selich. Um, last fall, you had done some concept sketches of on the northern part of the park of developing some plant communities and perimeter treatment and trails and seating areas up there. Did you bring any of that information with you today? Uh, 
I believe that's what's on uh, this board here. I don't know if you can see it. Maybe you can explain uh, what you were working on on that part of it. But our, our that, that's correct. Last fall, our uh, landscape uh, architect has uh, prepared some concepts to remove the coastal sage scrub that's in the area now and put in California native landscaping. Uh, Could you go back to the park uh, general site plan? One more. Okay, now show us on that map where you're talking about removing sage and that type of stuff. Uh, yes, there's a, uh, uh, a concept that uh, our landscape architect has uh, submitted to the city, uh, and that concept would be to uh, still protect the wetland and riparian areas here. And up on the bluffs, uh, come and remove the coastal sage scrub and do more of a California native garden park. Um, Jess, the landscape architect, tells me that there's a California native uh, park up in Claremont, uh, California. And, uh, he'd like to model something like that. Uh, again, people could walk on trails and have placards and uh, view the, the different type of California native plantings. And, and again, the, the northern portion is referred to the area north of this east-west riparian area here. Are you aware of there being any particular uh, uh, plant material or life in this area? This, this is part of the southern portion that uh, uh, needs to be protected? There, there is some coastal sage scrub in this area that we would affect uh, with our current design would be affected with construction of the park. Uh, that The removal of that coastal sage scrub as, as well as uh, the removal of this area as well uh, could be mitigated and there's a, a fee of $50,000 per acre to remove the coastal sage scrub and uh, that fee would be uh, paid to and be a part of the uh, NCCP program. Okay. Any other council members have questions? Because I, I want to give the PPNR people uh, a chance to, to comment. Uh, Mr. Nichols. Um, I understand the north-south uh, swale in there. It, that's actually uh, the end of the drainage ditch of the property up above, right? So that uh, basically it's not, it doesn't have, it, it's just that the property underneath the bus station down that comes down basically that side of avocado and then goes underground and comes out below here, right? Uh, correct. That uh, is uh, due to the outlet of the uh, city storm drain system. That so so that, that is really a storm drain swale. And at the entrance over here by avocado, there is a, uh, what do you call the vertical? Um, catch basin. Ca the catch basin for overflow when the swale fills up on a very big rain, essentially. Right, that, that's correct. The city storm drain system picks up again. And, and the and other that. end of that at MacArthur has a, a pretty good sized wall at, the, at present, and that uh, is mostly pavement type materials, is it not, where it comes out of uh, MacArthur? And uh, there's a, a, what I think about a 16 or 18 inch culvert that comes out right now and just goes into the the, uh, the swale. Uh, correct. You're talking about at this location right. here, right? I know the uh, storm drain comes through this area and uh, actually the storm San drain. Miguel. Actually, the storm drain comes from the track that's over here. Yes. This this fee, this piece here. There's a drain that goes underneath right there, that uh, goes doesn't go up to the transportation center, but it goes up to this site. This one here drains a fairly good portion of the area between San Miguel, Crown Drive, and uh, down around. And it all outlets at this point and ultimately ends up at the El Paseo Storm Drain at Bahia Corinthia Yacht Club. 
That, is that the Bahia Corinthian? Yes. Okay. Thank okay. You. We need to get moved forward because we're running out of time uh, for letting people talk about this. So can we, who is uh, next on your uh, uh, list of, for presentations? Mr. Mayor, you might want to just continue the other item that we have that would come after this one and, and uh, Well, that was the Newport Coast Parks. Yeah. Is anybody here that, to talk about Newport Coast Parks? Okay, we're going to continue that to the next study session so that uh, we can continue to get information on this uh, this plan. Mr. Mayor, members of the City Council, I'm Deborah Allen. I'm the chair of your Park Development Committee and a member of the Parks, Beaches, and Recreation Commission. We actually don't have any more formal presentation. We have a, a whole lot of people here who would like to express their opinions. I see some of my commissioners in the audience, and, uh, and they're probably going to want to come up and just say what they think about, about the park. I'm just going to point out a couple of things that I, I just want to make sure are very, very clear. If, if you look at, at the proposal that Mr. Ficker has, um, he's taking all of the grass area from the park. He's taking all the turf. All we're going to have left is the habitat area above. Now, we have been criticized, we, the city, and all of us have gotten phone calls and read letters in the Daily Pilot and what have you about a couple of our recent parks, uh, the, particularly the um, uh, Back Bay View Park and Castaways, which are both in the coastal zone. And we were required by the Coastal Commission not to plant turf grass. We were not permitted to plant turf grass. We were not permitted to put watering systems in. We had to rely on purely natural environment, okay? And be that as may, this site is not in the coastal zone. It gives us an opportunity to show both our residents in the city as well as the Coastal Commission perhaps, that this city knows how to put together a combination of beautiful native plants that could be a show place along with a turf park that will get enjoyed by people who want to see turf grass. I think it's really important. You can't put turf grass up at the northern part of the park. So if you put in Mr. Ficker's building, you've taken away all of the grass. You might as well not even have a park there because nobody is going to go from City Hall walking around through a bunch of habitat area that is difficult to access. The other thing I'd like to point out, and I think, I think you've probably figured this out already, Hall and Foreman ha have the plans all done. We're ready to go with this park. And uh, we have gone, because of your direction, we have worked very hard to put this park together and now to have someone come out of left field and say, I want to put City Hall on the park site, well, you, you know how I feel about that. The last thing I'd like to say is we're talking about, I, I, I believe you mentioned it, Mr. Mayor, the possibility of putting turf on the turf grass on the roof of the new City Hall building to mitigate the fact that, that, that we're taking away the turf grass. Now, come on. Uh, it was uh, my my concern was not necessarily to mitigate the taking away the turf grass was to provide a public space that would provide a provide a replacement for the review the view that would be lost if we don't build a park there and if you look at uh, turf grass uh, and I, a wonderful example of that situation is you go down to Monarch Bay and the parking structure that the public uses. Uh, which is totally hidden from Coast Highway, is covered with grass. Yes. No, no, I, I know. It can be done. Yeah. But my and point yeah. is we have a plan to put a grass park in there, and the grass park is going to be large enough for people to throw a Frisbee, people to walk around, have lunch, brown bag from, from Fashion Island or, or, or Newport Center, and, and that's not the same thing as putting grass on the roof of City Hall. Um, a couple of other things. I'll, I'll kind of do what Mr. Ficker did. I forgot a couple of things. Um, another thing you should notice is uh, Mr. Ficker said he'd, his, his plan was designed to make everything look very open. But if you look at the back of the site, come, come from Fairlawn across that way and down to MacArthur where the site is, that's one huge retaining wall. Matter of fact, I think according to his numbers, the, uh, the site varies from... Um, 170 to 192 um, in, in the library 
floor is 135. That's a, what, 40, 20, 40, 60 foot retaining wall all the way across the back of the site. Because that's the only way you can sink that site down and make it flat and make it parallel to the floor of the library. It's I at least 20, 30 feet. I believe if you look at the, the, the section that was in our report, it says that there's a 10 foot wall and a lot of it is slope. It's uh, probably a two to one slope. If, if it's a 10 foot retaining wall, is it, is it going to be a concrete wall that's sloped this way? I mean, it doesn't. And, uh, no, it, it, it starts off like that, mm -hmm. and then up above it goes up to to the top of the berm on MacArthur Boulevard. Okay. And, well, and the top of the berm on MacArthur that, Boulevard. Even that, even that could be removed okay. if the, the berm on MacArthur Boulevard were removed. But that's. But the top of that berm, according to Mr. Figger's presentation, is 192 elevation, and the library floor is 135. So there's, somehow you've got to dig that site down 60 feet in order to make it flat and par parallel to the library. I think that if you look at Mr. Ficker, Ficker's plan, this site here is the 190 feet. Right. The City Hall's elevation, as I interpret it, the floor of City Hall would be 160. The library is at 134, and the parking structure would be several different levels starting at the 160 and working its way down in three levels to get down here. If, I'm, if I interpreted the plan correctly. So in other words, it's not going to be at the level of the library. It's going to be 30 feet higher. And the, you're, going to the access, city hall would be, yes. you're going to access the building from the parking structure. That was going to be my other point. Many of you may remember the problem we had with the lights at the library parking lot. You're putting a two-story parking structure, which by definition has to have lights for safety if for no other reason. And it's going to be right at the view plane. The library parking structure, or the, the library parking lot, where we had all the problem with the neighbors, including my neighborhood, and the lights, is 135 elevation. Now you're talking about going up to 160 elevation and putting in a two-story parking structure. So not only do people get a chance to look at the park, at the at the parked cars, but they get to look at the lights as well. Okay, we could probably debate this, but if you look at the plan here, the parking lot elevation is at 160, not up two stories higher, so that any lights would end up still being... Uh, the lights would be at 160. No, the, the floor of the parking structure is at 160. So the lights would be higher than that. Yes. The lights at the library that caused all of the problem are, are 10 feet higher than 135. So we had the library light problem with lights at maybe 145 and 150, and now you're talking about lights that are 20 feet higher in the air. Just a few little details that I think are rather significant. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, we have until 6 o'clock, and uh, I think that uh, uh, We'd like to hear public comments related to the two various different issues that we have uh, discussed tonight. And uh, I'd like to see if we can get a mixture. If uh, Let me get just a rough show of hands. How many people feel that there should be a park on the site north of the library? OK, how many feel would like to? Uh, see more work done and consider a city hall north of the library. Okay, so I, I'm, I'm, I didn't count everybody exactly, but it looks like that we're about split equally. And so that... Uh, Both sides dispute that. I understand that uh, I, I, could, I could do that, but I'll bet that, that you might have 40 percent, 60 percent. I'll give you that, that edge if you want. But you to. won't give which side. <laughs> I'm not saying. <laughs> Spoken like a true politician. Uh, okay, let, let's see if we can and alternate up here to where we don't get bogged down with one side or the other if, if, since we're, we're here. And those of you that feel that you would like to make a presentation and you have new points or things that we, should, we haven't considered so far or you would like to have us consider it, please bring it up. But if we repeat the same thing over and over again, we're going to run out of time before we get finished. So Mr. welcome. Do you want to limit to two minutes like, in uh, order to try and get the most people? All right. Does uh, the council feel that a two-minute limit on presentations would be appropriate for this? Anybody, do you object to a two-minute limit on this? Okay. 
Don't Everybody has wanna, two minutes. Don't you want to give them a little longer? Tom unless Wilson, there's that Carla many. Del Mar, sorry. Okay, we, we, why don't we try for two minutes and we'll try it out. And if, it, if we're not getting minutes. enough time, then we may extend it to three. Don't talk to me about, <laughs> about repetition. We came down here, we made our case, the lights went on, we went home, we'll be back again. So I don't understand why this came up again, although I realize facts have changed. Now, the study group is surely going to look at the costs of these various alternatives. There is no appraised value on the uh, park site because it was never contemplated to be used for a building. So I just kind of wonder if it's unthinkable to put a commercial building on the park site why is it thinkable to put a government building on one? That being so, in addition to the actual appraised costs, the study group and the council must consider the social costs. People living near that area, the ones whose hands went up to, in answer to your first question, will be severely impacted. You know that. Noise, traffic, the upheaval will be tremendous. They will see a high cost, and that should be considered by a municipal organization. But there'll be a broader cost borne by the entire city, a loss of a park in a magnificent location. It is a magnificent location. You come over that brow of MacArthur, you see the water green and the ocean beyond. It's priceless. Now, some people think a park is just a park. It's not. A fine city doesn't just put a park where it happens to have some space left over. It plans it, designs it, and builds around it. This figure is right about one thing. If we were looking at a clean sheet Newport Beach, we probably wouldn't put the city hall here. If we were looking at a clean sheet New York City, you know where we put the city hall? Right where Central Park is, the best location for it, ideally located. Council members, when you have the facts before you, I hope you'll raise your eyes above the numbers and visualize this city in the future. I hope it will be a city that has the wisdom and the confidence to make a decision that will preserve our charm, the city's charm, in spite of architectural temptations. Thank you. Yeah, I think, we'd, I, I think it'd be better for us to just figure on three minutes. It, I think two minutes is a little bit. How long did he take? Short. Uh, he took uh, two minutes and 32 seconds. I think, I, I think I can get under that. My name's Dennis Baker. I live in Corona del Mar. And um, first off, I want to state that I'm opposed to the taking of park lands. And I, and I choose those words very carefully. Uh, there's been some proposals here that indicate there might be some trading. There might be some things like that. I actually think, and it's been alluded to m numerous times, I actually think there's a way of gaining park land. And Mr. Mayor, you mentioned it. I have in my hand right here a brochure from a, an organization, a company called Raina Creek, one of many, but they're one of the most renowned and work in UCLA, doing work in Los Angeles and so on. And I will, I don't have them with me, but I will provide each council member with this particular brochure from them for reference. And um, so the idea is that Raina Creek has done many buildings that have not, it, turf is, is not always the right term, basically landscape roofs. So they can have habitat on it, have grasses, have turf, so on and so forth. It's a, it's a whole field in architecture. And therefore, I think it is possible, remember, I'm still opposed to the taking of park land, but I think it is possible to look at this carefully and come up with a solution that may actually be able to provide a park on top of the building. I think that is doable. Now, the, the issue is cost. I think the whole, I think the, one of the biggest scams on Newport Beach was the word free city hall. I mean, I just cringe on that. There is no free city hall. There's no free lunch. Uh, I think our, our police chief quoted recently, or somebody, Police chief, if it sounds too good to be true, it is too good to be true, you know, when you buy that car for half price. So uh, I think we need to give some consideration to that. Examples were referenced, the Muth Interpretive Center. You can walk right out on the top of that. It's look around, it's sand, it's sage, and you're on top of the building. So we have some examples of that. I will be getting this to each of the council members, and hopefully we'll have a chance to talk to each of you about that. Thank you very much. Good, and that was under two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Elizabeth Starr, and I've lived in Corona Del Mar for 34 years. Um, in 1989, my husband and I accepted the responsibility to raise the money to build the public library, the main library. If after we had worked, and it was a five-year project to raise that money to build that library, 
if after we had worked that hard, we had no dinner that we did not discuss the library for five years, if the city council had changed their mind and said, sorry, we're not going to build a library, it would have been bad news. Now you have had a group of citizens who have gone out to raise money for this park. If you now tell them, sorry, it's not going to happen, you will never get another group of citizens to help the city of Newport Beach. Um, the illustrations that were shown both by Mr. Ficker and by the park group show that little tiny stretch of San Miguel between MacArthur and Avocado. No time can you get through that light of that intersection. No time of any time of day do you go by that intersection that the traffic is not blocked up on MacArthur trying to make that turn. People going into Fashion Island, people going into the medical buildings. If you compound that intersection by having people go to City Hall, it will absolutely be disaster for Newport Beach. Furthermore, be aware that anybody who now lives in Irvine Terrace must make that turn because the way the highway is designed down at the bottom, they cannot get over in the left-hand lane fast enough to go into Irvine Terrace. So that whole block of residents must make that turn from MacArthur onto San Miguel, down Avocado in order to get home now. Um, once again, the water situation at the library, we do pump daily, and that is something that should be considered, and we must have more parking on that site for the library. When we were building the library, we were to have 250 spaces for the art museum and 250 for the library. The art museum did not happen, therefore we have 250 spaces. We cannot really use a meeting room at the library because we do not have the parking adequate to handle to have a large group in that meeting room. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Please work your way forward so that uh, we don't have to wait uh, between speakers. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, staff, and concerned citizens, my name is George Jeffries. I'm a resident of Corona del Mar and a resident of Old Harbor View Hills, directly adjacent to the proposed building site uh, that we have discussed tonight. Uh, preliminarily, before I present my, the finish of my presentation last week <laughs> or two weeks ago, I was on the library board at the time that the lighting problem occurred. It was handled pretty readily by changing in lighting design that eliminated the problem as far as our neighbors were concerned. Uh, the San Miguel problem, however, continues to be a, su a substantial issue as far as traffic is concerned, and I do know that uh, Mr. Ficker has kept this simple and he has not made an effort to present it uh, to you. However, uh, the grades are such that there's only a 15-foot grade separation at Farallon at Avocado and Farallon, if you extended Farallon up to MacArthur, that's a 3% grade separation and it means in effect that you could readily, if you chose to and designed the an intersection, have the freedom that uh, Mrs. Starr is concerned about concerning traffic circulation that could come down through Farallon to Avocado in order to solve that problem. Now, uh, the basic purpose of my presentation tonight is a continuation of my concern for the safety of the people of the city of Newport Beach. As you know, you are primarily responsible for the health, safety, and welfare of our citizens. And, and uh, I want to tell you a fast story. In 1964, I was a young district attorney who had occasion to come to the city hall uh, on several, numerous occasions. And on uh, one night, uh, there was a report of a huge earthquake uh, in uh, Alaska at, uh, that uh, devastated Anchorage. And according to the information we were getting, the uh, tidal wave was coming down the California coast and had devastated Eureka as well. And I was there when the city uh, police chief turned to the then city mayor and said, well, mayor, shall we evacuate the peninsula? Now. I don't want to lengthen this because I know there's too little time to talk about it at this time. You, but you have about 35 say, seconds. At, at some point in time, one of you sitting as mayor may get to answer that same question. And if you happen to have, decide that you're going to evacuate the city, city's peninsula because of a prospective tidal wave or earthquake or other danger, the next thing that's going to happen is the police chief is going to say to you, Mr. Mayor, you must leave now too because the city hall situated in this location is on the peninsula and you must evacuate all of the city 
at ploys as well so that they can deal with the devastation that could possibly be caused to our city. For that reason, I encourage you strongly to consider a site, perhaps not the site that's proposed by Mr. Picker, Picker but a site that is not located at this area. Thank you. Thank you. We, applause doesn't do you any good, so uh, it, it may delay the meeting, but uh, Mr. Allen. My name is Barry Allen. Uh, I just want to talk about fairness. Uh, the city manager, Mr. Bluedow, sent out something in our water bills uh, quite some time ago to tell us about what the city was doing with the general plan. And it says one of the things it's going to do is going to protect public views and open space and prohibit development on designated open space. Now, I want to talk about fairness. We'll go to the recreation and open space element of the city of Newport Beach, June 1988, or 1998, excuse me. And it says that 60% of the people want walking paths in their parks. That's what this particular park has, both in the upper and lower level as designated. Corona Del Mar only has only, only half of the parks that are needed. However, if you count the beaches, then we'd still be deficient by 9.1 acres. That's even with this park. Uh, the environmental resources uh, in the, in, in the discussed in this talk about how we're supposed to preserve environmental resources, but at the same time give parks. And th this, again, indicates to the people of Newport Beach in 1989, or 1998, excuse me, that we're talking about this particular park and what we're going to do in this park and other parks that are going to be built in the city. The objective and policy is to operate and maintain and enhance existing public recreational act facilities at current or increased levels of service, ensure adequate operational and maintenance provisions for two, I'm sorry, excuse me, for new recreational facilities in annexed areas. This is the objective and policy from 1998. Uh, funding. They talk about identify potential fi financial mechanisms and explore potential financing means for timely and balanced development of the city's recreational facilities. Well, as we've already heard, I'm not going to detail it, we've already done this. The public did this. People in your park committee did this and went out and raised the money to build this particular park after it had been approved. Now, this particular park isn't something that just came along yesterday. This park has been in the system ever since at least 1998, and it talks about it on page 4.6 where it discusses Newport Village Neighborhood Park, 12 acres, park site above the Central Central Library. It shows it on a map. Uh, again, it's talked about uh, as part of a SIOSA agreement, open space dedication. It sure is an open space to build a city hall there, folks. It's not open space anymore, and you got a SIOSA agreement. Would it be interesting? Because it's a SIOSA agreement, guess who has to approve changing that designation from a park somewhere where you can build an office building. Gosh, who would that be? The Irvine Company, exactly the people who don't want to deal with you on the property on Civic Center where they say they won't ever sell property. And yet we all know the Irvine Company's behind the plan to try and build a city hall here because they don't want you taking some other property from them. They, they want it in Newport Center. They've always wanted City Hall in Newport Center, and all of you know that. They've always wanted it there, and now they're going to get it, but they're going to get it on our park site, not on their own property where we might be able to work out a deal with them. Again, it showed the facility just mentioned throughout here. I just think it's ultimate fairness to the citizens of the city of Newport Beach that it's just unfair, unfair to even think about taking this park site and building a city hall there. And if you want to give me some time, I'll talk about water on the property. If you don't want to, I'll sit down. Uh, I think that we know enough about water right now. Thank you. Please, the, the applause. Just move forward, those that want to speak, so that we uh, can uh, shorten the distance between time. I'm Nancy Gardner from Corona Del Mar. Um, a wonderful presentation by Mr. Ficker. I, you almost convinced me. Um, a lot of exciting <laughs> things about it. <laughs> My concern, though, is the precedent. We have open space. We dedicated it as open space. And as I said once before, it seems like it's always fair game. But even farther, I think even if we mitigate, even if we suddenly make this into an urban park, which is a you know one for one or something like that, with this park, you asked a group of people to go out and for, get some private funding. They did. Now we take that away. The next time we have a park and we want to get some private funding, who on earth would, would give the money? Because they would say, well, I have no guarantee with the city of Newport Beach that this will remain open space, which is what I'm giving my money for. So I think we have to be very careful about any precedents we set by reversing this stand from open space to a public building. 
Thank you. Next, please. My name is Ben Schmid. Uh, I've lived on Balboa Island for 40 years, and uh, I uh, concur with Mr. Ficker that the uh, City Hall would be in a very good position there uh, by the library. Uh, several questions came up from council members uh, regarding the wall that would be required along MacArthur, and I've given you a couple of pictures at uh, in Sail House Lane and Sea Lane, just uh, across the street from this site uh, across MacArthur. Uh, there's a 20-foot high wall there that's been planted with ivy, and you can see it. It's been there about two years, and it really looks quite attractive. If you need a 20-foot wall, this way you handle it with the ivy, and you have very dense housing just beside it, but it, uh, it belongs. And the other item has to do with there seems to be a, a pressure to get the show on the road because of the cost of construction, and the cost of construction, according to the engineer news record, has been dropping some uh, this six months of this year, and it probably will not continue to rise as, as the inflation, the funds you get from uh, stores and uh, restaurants, and, and the improvement of uh, increase of property values. So I think you can stand back, take your time, look at this, uh, have strong investigations made, and study it very well before you proceed and actually decide. I don't think you have to do it this week or within th three months. I think you can stand, stand back and see if it's really the cut for you. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, City Council members, Jan Bannerford from Newport Heights. Um, I'm giving you a handout here. Uh, I won't be able to get through this in three minutes, but basically it details a history of the site and the agreements that the city has made. The city has actually made two agreements on the site. The Library Exchange Agreement of 1991, when you remove the entitlement for the uh, development above the library to Newport Center and declared this to be open space. So you, have or you had the agreement in 1991 for this to be open space. And then in 1993, the Ciosa agreement called for the area to be dedicated to the city as open space, and the only use that's supposed to be used on that property is open space. And so you have two agreements. Uh, and I ask and I beg you to keep your agreements, keep your commitments, keep your faith with the people. What kind of example are we setting for the people of Newport Beach and our children when we change those kinds of agreements uh, when we already have two of them for open space? These are very valuable agreements to keep, and I, and I implore you to uh, keep those agreements. I would like to uh, make a mention of the, uh, the views from the center of the southern part of the site where the city hall is going to be. Those views are the best views from the whole site. The views that are from the northern are basically truncated to be right above the library. So, of course, you can see the ocean, but you can only see the northern coastline, including the Newport Harbor, and all the way to um, Huntington Beach and the Palos Verdes Peninsula from the uh, turf grass area, which will be removed by the Ficker City Hall. That view opportunity will be lost completely unless you do like you say to do and put yeah. turf grass on top of a building. You know, I mean, that, you know, that's something I would think about. The other thing is the environmental sensitivity is greater than what has been stated so far. That coastal sage scrub has gnat catchers. There are vernal pools are right in the area that Farallon would be cutting right through the park. And I would ask that whatever plan you do, you keep the coastal sage scrub. You don't do that plan that they just introduced of uh, last fall. I think that's, that's not a good idea, but you keep as much of the sensitivity as you can and that you actually, if you do build a city hall, that you build it on the very, very southern end and you keep everything, get rid of that parking lot, but <laughs> the, that 80 space parking lot. And the last thing I want to do, the last page here shows a sensitive plant species called the woolly marbles. Look at the very last. These are only found in vernal pools. And those are found on the site that the consultant said was not environmentally sensitive. But in fact, you do have uh, vernal pools up on that land that ought to be protected. And will be a problem because 
the Army Corps of Engineers and Fishing Game will be on your back if you try to destroy those. So please keep your commitments. Thank you very much. Now, Jan, Jan, are these the weeds that you were going to transplant to my front yard? I'm going to spread some of those woolly marbles on your front yard. <laughs> are these in the, the uh, water space or are they in the... That down there by where the city hall was going to go, Jan. No, he's talking about an area that would be right here, Dick. Isn't that correct? Okay. Well, let's yeah, let's go. We got to move forward. Line. Yeah. That's right. Hi, um, my name is Ann Balderston. I live in Old Corner Del Mar, and uh, I worked uh, very hard on saving this open space in the first place. And it is an incredibly beautiful site. And I would like to just say something about the beauty of this place and, and what a gem it truly is. And, and I feel that it's a gem for the people that live here and for the people that come to visit our area. And the, the, not everyone has a, has a beautiful view from their living room. And to be um, up on that site is so special. And I'd like to just invite anyone that hasn't been up there for a while to come up and um, of course right now it's summertime a lot of the native plants and native species are have died back so it looks a little crunchy up there but uh, it's it's incredible that the uh, the the air blows around the, the breeze the, the the views of the ocean and I, I just feel that that belongs to our people you know it belongs to the people that live here that, so that they can go up and take their kids and um, fly kites, throw frisbees, and learn about nature, and learn about uh, endangered species. And I, I think that the, um, the amphitheater on the park site is, uh, would be great for teachers to bring their classrooms and teach them about nature and, and why it's so important to protect it. And uh, I'd just like to invite you all to go up there. Thank you. I, I've been there. Several times. I figured you would, you would have been. <laughs> Next, please. Good evening, Mayor and uh, <clears throat> Council Members. I just want to thank Bill Ficker uh, publicly. Okay, can you give us your name, please? James Turner, Newport James. Beach. Uh, I just want to thank Bill Ficker publicly for all the time and work he's put into this project. And uh, I support it uh, fully. Uh, <clears throat> we have seven or eight miles of beautiful beaches here, and I don't think many of us moved here for the park space. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, I'm Lucille Kewen. Um I wanted to put some historical and maybe a little bit of political perspective into some of the discussion. I built my home in Irvine Terrace in 1957-58 when cattle grazed in Newport Center. I didn't object when Newport Center was being built. I thought, gee, this is a great convenience. When in 1974 I decided to run for city council, one of the major in my platform was building adequate library facilities. And this was long before 1989 when money was being raised for it. There was a great need at that time. And the time existed until we were able to fund it, until we had a city council that, that supported it. Uh, I'd like to ask a question. How many of you have been to the Roger Sites View Park in Newport Center? Would you raise your hand? The Roger Sites View Park in Newport Center. Very, very few. It's a beautiful little site. It's precious. It has a That's right by the uh, escalators. Yes, it's below yes, Robinson. I've been there. Yes. <laughs> I helped to dedicate that. I helped to dedicate that park. And it was in the memory of a very great man and a very great planner who worked for the Irvine Company. The Irvine Company has put a lot of thought into the planning of the city. I, I'm sorry that they're reticent in helping us to develop another site. 
when Bill Vicker made his presentation, I came off my E-Day fix because I too supported this wonderful park plan. Uh, I walked that site. There's a picture of me in the Daily Pilot on the front page looking down and saying, isn't this a glorious site? Well, when you get new information, if you're a thinking person, if you're a person of some wisdom, you sometimes change your ideas in order to accommodate to the needs of the people. One of the problems with our city is that we have, we identify as individual districts and we don't identify with the city as a whole. When I ran for city council, I brought this problem to the floor and tried to help solve it. I have not solved it because we still are seven districts without a center, without, without something to identify as a city center and where our hearts and our souls. I'd like to ask the Allens, how far do you live from the site? Well, let's, let's keep it, uh, let's not okay. get into the discussion because it'll last forever. All right, I can go on. I, I know you, you know I can. Uh, <laughs> Well, uh, actually, your time just ran out. Can you please summarize? Okay. Well, <laughs> I, I interrupted you. I would say that one of the best things that Bill Ficker has done is to open our eyes to the possibility of something other than the site of the city hall as where we stand at this moment and sit, that there are other possibilities. And I'd like to expand our minds and think of all the possibilities and what is the greatest good for the greatest number of the people in Newport Beach. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, Bernie Spalstad, Council. I was a chairperson that uh, 20 person committee that raised a million two originally for this park. It's down to 600,000. Uh, basically, I don't want to be redundant. I'll just mention a couple points. If you put a city hall here as Mr. Ficker has designed, it would appear to me We'll have scrub at the top that looks like Jamboree and Pacific Coast Highway. Then we'll have a rooftop of City Hall. This, like they mentioned, is probably the most beautiful view anywhere in the city uh, for a park uh, up on the top portion that would be turf. So it's a beautiful area. I suggest that you have the clout and the capability. If you don't, I'd be questioned why. That the best spot is Corporate Plaza they have a building, I think, that's vacant. If they won't lease, they got to lease it to somebody. You get a 99-year lease, option to buy. That's the best site in the city. And I don't know why we don't have enough pressure, we don't have enough clout to negotiate a deal with City Hall there. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have time for two more people. Uh-oh, gosh. All right. If, if we can get you to, to talk fast, then we'll see. We've got three people then. Garrett, Garrett Smith, architect. Uh, I completely concur with Bill Ficker's plan. I'd like to point out a couple of things that I don't believe have been mentioned specifically. Uh, they've talked about traffic problems around the Ficker's plan. Uh, this is a wonderful opportunity to a traffic engineer to take care of the problems on San Miguel and the, and the SIP library and the shopping center there. So that's another good point about the library or the city hall being there. Uh, one of the things I'm concerned about city hall being here is sand liquidification. I uh, did a uh, building over here about 200 yards away in 1958, I believe it was, Bay Lido office building. We had to put concrete pilings down 35 feet to support the building and to concern for liquefaction of the site. You have that same problem right here. You can't just put the building on, on the ground here or we'll all be sued. The other thing is the uh, mention of the uh, flood. Uh, this is too close to sea level and be wiped out here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, we had two more people that, uh, that run, and the gentleman is sitting over in the corner. Uh, good evening, uh, council members. I'm Ron Hendricks in Newport Beach. Uh, I just want to comment. I know it's very frustrating for all these folks that have put hours and hours and hours into this park site. And, uh, but I think we have to look for the 
the total betterment of the community when we're really down to the last time that we're analyzing where we're going to put the city hall. I think Bill has pointed out some, some very uh, concerning problems of having it in the location on this existing site. Uh, I think we need, need not forget that if it were located on the uh, MacArthur Avocado site, there still is ample park site up there. And uh, the park promoters in this town, and more recently, have really wanted this natural type park. So what would remain up there is a natural type park. And I, I think many of you I know have been up on the site. The one thing that cancels out the goodness of the site up there is the noise from MacArthur. I think to have a turf area up there or even an amphitheater is all going to be compromised by the noise from MacArthur. Uh, one question that, uh, well, I just want to conclude that I think the council hopefully will give real serious consideration to this site. I think a lot of uh, information has come out here on both sides. And uh, unfortunately, we didn't have these kind of discussions in the past. I think that this site was, was pretty much a given thing before it ever got opened up to the public. Last thing is I wonder why uh, Laguna was able to build the Montage Park right on the bluff and put in a fantastically beautiful park with all kinds of landscaping, flowering plants, and we're not able to do that in Newport. Somehow they must have a real connection with the Coastal Commission. Thank you. Thank you. This gentleman over here. Mr. Mayor, my name is Barton Beek. I'm here with my wife, Linda. We live in Corona Del Mar. I want to say that I've heard this drumbeat that says we can't use parkland for a city hall. What I hear this proposal to be is a proposal to place a city hall on that parkland and free this site that we're standing on to be a parkland in the heart of the traditional city. I think that's a very good trade. I live in Corona Del Mar. I go by this park site every day, two or three times a day. I don't think it's a very good park site. I don't see the residential base that will send little kids to play in that park. They aren't there. They're not going to be able to get there unless they pack into their SUVs and drive there. So I don't see that park functionally as very desirable. This park, much more desirable. And of course, the traffic problem, wherever you put the city hall, there's going to be a traffic problem. But the one worst place right here, as we all know. Oh, and one more thing. The Environmental Protection Agency tells us that within 50 years, the level of the sea will likely have risen a foot and a half. Now that won't quite flood this building, but it'll make this building uninhabitable. Excuse me, can you get your little brother behind you to uh, uh, agree with us more often, please? I don't know. I don't have any influence over him. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with what he said. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, my. Okay. What I'd like to do is uh, we're running uh, short. We have to close at 6. Um, I personally would like to ask the staff to come, and I want to throw this out to the council, and the council can either uh, hit me over the head and say go away or say it's a good idea, let's propose it. I'd like to see if the staff can come back to us with uh, a proposal that would tell us how we might be able to do an advisory vote on this site, and one that uh, uh, if, if we do do an advisory vote that would say uh, the park site would, uh, would uh, be exchanged for the city hall site here if uh, that uh, proposed, if we were to put the city hall over in the other, other area. Realizing that we have not done environmental documentation to fully justify putting a city hall any place else other than here and that environmental documentation would actually have to be done prior to before it could be built over at the other side. But if we could work out some sort of proposal or wording or uh, you could give us guidance on what would be needed if we were to put together an advisory vote. I guess that, that I, I really up until six months ago felt that, that we were going in a direction, the park was already determined, it was out there. Since this discussion has come up, I have 
I've really gotten mixed reactions from a broad section of the community. I have felt that, that the input that I have received has been from both sides. And that uh, I, I think that because it's so equal out there that, that I think that we need to, this is a situation where we can uh, go to the public and say, all right, you have an opportunity to tell us, should it be over there or should it be here? And uh, if, if we do come up with some sort of, uh, of proposal like that, I think that we need to see what kind of wording changes, if necessary, we might need to make in the new general plan that we're, that we're proposing to accommodate that. So I'm tossing that out. What does the rest of the council think about a proposal similar to that? I got him speechless. This is really unusual. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Mayor, I don't, I don't think that in the time that it would take to put something together for the ballot that we can define these sites in a way that sort of solves all the open issues. I mean, Mr. Ficker did a very good job today of conceptualizing his plan, but we don't know what the floor plan will look like, how many stories, what it will really do to the view, whether or not it, it deals properly with the water plane there. Uh, you know, we have green light issues potentially by changing the designation. Uh, and frankly, I think this is, a, this is a hard decision. I agree with you because I I've, I've, will be talking to somebody and another person will walk up and have a diametrically different view about this. But this is the kind of decision that I think the people expect us to look at the data, to weigh it, and I'm glad that we have this hearing today. As I said before, I was skeptical of this plan, but I think it put a lot of good information on the table uh, to get all the in information out but then to make a decision, to make it in a transparent way and to put forth the reasons for why we make it. Yeah, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, I agree with uh, Councilman Curry when he said that I think that we're here to, to make the decisions on, on things like this. That's what representative government is, is all about. And uh, I think we, you know, we do need some additional information. I, I think that um, there's one site in uh, Newport Center that we really haven't evaluated. It was actually the third site on the, uh, on the site committee's list, and that's the existing police and fire facility on Santa Barbara. Uh, and there might be a way for us to build a facility there. It would be a, more of a multi-story facility like we have in other buildings in Newport Center that would give us the central location without taking away the park. And uh, that fell short on the committee's list because the council had put constrictions or constraints I should say on what the uh, site committee was looking at in, in terms of, of the time frame and the site committee felt that the site was complicated enough that it could not be done in the time frame that the council was asking for but in light of the discussion that's come up over the central location in Newport Center there's a site that we already own and that if we did go to multi-story buildings on there, it's probably feasible to put in the type of square footage we're looking at and still not take away the park. So I, th I think there's maybe a little bit more work we need to do before we consider uh, going to a ballot issue on it. Uh, Councilmember Daigle, do you and Mr. Nichols have anything to say? Uh, yes, it's nice to see all of you today and, and certainly both uh, Lucille and Elizabeth have, have made very valuable contributions to our libraries and uh, certainly part of the fabric, fabric of our community. I know that many of you have made um, very valuable uh, contributions to our community. I think we can all agree that uh, Mr. Ficker has opened the door to creativity and, and I applaud him for his courage and, and, and mo trying to move his ideas forward. I happened to speak to another renowned architect today and he expressed to me some interest in a, a plan at Civic Center. Now I don't know if he'll come forward or, or send a surrogate, I'm not quite sure. But I th do agree with Mr. Selich's idea though that, that maybe looking at that site also might be appropriate. It, it does seem that the community does have a desire for a central location and I, I think we need to maybe look more closely at that as well. Um, yeah, my comment on this is that when we had an art museum on this particular site taking the same place as the city hall, that was all acceptable and everybody, you know, was in line. They had bought into it. It wasn't so good when it was a, 
uh, interchange for a freeway, that, that wasn't the best site. So I basically people fought the interchange. Uh, when it was elderly housing, well, that wasn't really pushed real fast either direction. But it, but this has had multiple uh, sightings on it. It's had multiple zonings for these things. Uh, the art museum just couldn't get the funding all together, I guess, and that's really why it disappeared, not because it wasn't acceptable to the population. If you come down MacArthur now, the berm that's there that restricts your ability to see the ocean is going to stay, and that's staying so that it acts as a site impediment so the houses across the street can't see the city hall, won't see city. So they'll look above that site plane and will, will not see anything there to the large extent. And depending on what level they are, they may see a little bit. Now the top of the library building has never been an impediment to view that I've seen. I mean, I, I going up there, that is not considered a view impediment. So I'm not sure that, that the present library has provided a view impediment at the roof of it, and it's pretty darn high. <clears throat> so I'm, I'm not convinced that, that we shouldn't look at this some more. I think that this, my feeling was that this should be a baseline. We look right now at the fact that we're talking about excavating one half of what we were going to do for the city hall parking, which would have given us something like two and a half times the amount of parking, so it would really allow the site to be properly parked. But we're doing this excavation anyway as part of the park. We're not bothering anybody, we're, we're putting in the green, uh, and that's not bothering any of the flora or fauna that's supposedly so, so uh, valuable and has to be protected. So I don't see the protection issue as one or the other. It seems to me that uh, we can improve traffic significantly if we looked at maybe extending Farallon. And uh, that would be, uh, 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 that has uh, uh, some merit there and will ultimately probably be looked at. So I, I, uh, I, I don't, uh, I think that we're on the right track and I think we need to do this and I believe now we've seen a, uh, Dick. a density here in our population that's been skewed. So as the meetings progress, okay. I think Mr. You Nichols, will not we need to that. kind of shorten it up a little bit. Uh, what is your thought re relative to I think an advisory to, vote? I think we need to, to uh, get more information, and as we do, I think the advisory vote will will possibly become mute. I don't, I don't think uh, we'll need that. I do think that the population should weigh in. It, it's obviously necessary. Thank you. Mr. Rosanke, I haven't heard anything from you today. <laughs> not unless you want to. Well, I mean, it's clear, or maybe not clear, I guess. It seems like even our council members are on one end to the other. You know, I'm I guess a little befuddled as to what to do now. I've always said that you know we should have City Hall here. I've always said that that property should be a park. But now we're you know we we just can't seem to 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 settle on anything. Unfortunately, Ed's talking now about another site which may be a good site as well. I mean I, I don't know. And so I I guess my feeling is is that you know if we if we as a council can't agree at least more than just the majority, more than just four members here as to what the direction be, should be because it is an important decision. I mean, we're talking about parks, we're talking about people's lives, we're talking about uh, a building that's going to house our city government for the next 50 to 75 years that maybe it does need more study. And I, I was against setting up the committee six months ago when we looked at alternative sites. Um, you know, we've spent years now 
I've, I've been on the city council three years, and I, you know we've been working on this ever since then, and they were working on it before I got here. So, you know, I th and and we did do a show of hands here today, and half are in favor, and half are against, and it, it seems kind of a divisive thing. Um, I, I guess a few observations or, or my feelings on it. Um, it. In the event that it did go that way, let's say that there was talk of putting City Hall on this site, I, I would support the mayor in an advisory vote. And I'm not one that supports throwing things out there to the electorate to vote. I agree with Councilman Curry that we're elected representatives and we should make decisions. But I do carve out a couple of exceptions, and I did carve out one for Marina Park when we, when we had the advisory vote there. Because it was a site that was designated for a park, the city had plans to lease it to a developer to turn it into a hotel, which I thought was a, a, a desirable use for the property because it fulfilled other needs in the community other than park needs. It fulfilled a uh, need to revitalize the peninsula. But it was city-owned land, and it was designated to be a park at, for years, years ago, even longer than this property has been designated to be a park. And so I felt it was important to get the, the pulse of the, of the community. And so if it does at some point look like we may consider City Hall for this site, I would want to put it to an advisory vote. Um, I think that the site needs a lot more study. Mr. Fickers presented some interesting ideas, but I think he's only scratched the surface. I mean, we, we w when we had our site review committee, we looked at a lot of different sites and we eliminated them for different reasons, and some of those reasons do exist here. I mean, we do have traffic issues on San Miguel that would have to be addressed. You can't just plump City Hall down here and not figure that out. So yeah, it may require putting a road from Farallon onto MacArthur. Obviously that's not going to be a popular thing. It may require putting lights in a parking lot. Obviously that's not going to be a popular thing. And so all these things need to be studied. The impacts would need to be assessed before we can make an intelligent decision, or certainly before I'm willing to vote on it. I saw actually things about the park today that I didn't like. I didn't really like the fact that the parking lot's going to be where it's going to be. And quite honestly, if we do move forward with the park, you know, I'm going to insist that it be brought back and that we do examine other alternatives for parking there, you know, off of Farallon where people can actually drive in and walk on a level ground or semi-level ground to enter the park. So I don't think the park idea is, is quite finished either, at least in my book. So, uh, you know, I, I guess, you know, in my mind, I don't, I'm not going to make a decision today. I'm, I'm, I, I think I want to noodle it a little bit more okay. and uh, take back some of the information that was um, gathered here today and, and think about it a little bit more. This uh, is scheduled for the evening meeting, at our next meeting, to make a determination of which direction we're going to go. And so that my thought was in having the staff put together uh, what it might take if we were to go that direction. That way we aren't saying that this is the way what we're going to do, but at least we would have the information available in case that was one of the directions we tended to go. Well, certainly I wouldn't object to hearing more information. And I do want to add one other thing to my comments. If, in fact, this property did ever become a, a city hall site or a portion of it did, I would insist, in my mind anyway, that this prop that we're not going to have a net loss of park site in town, that somehow the park would have to be replaced. I like the mayor's idea of, you know, greening the top of a building. I mean, I certainly... Uh, in, in that case, it might even create more opportunities for people, not only a park site here, but, you know, uh, a broader, you know, expanse of green, uh, even on the city hall site. So that would be my opinion as well. I think that my, my proposal meant that, I mean, included something similar to what Mr. Ficker had projected for this, projected, had for this site to be an open space site. Okay. Let's... Uh, uh, we have a closed session that we're supposed to adjourn to. So I think your direction, um, excuse, public comments on items that we haven't discussed. Discussed, right. I want to just say a couple of things. My name is Dolores Odding. I live in Newport Beach. It was a year ago in March and a year ago in April that we sat here on Saturdays to discuss this issue, okay? Over a year ago. And people wanted an advisory vote then. People wanted to vote then. And we wasted a year and a half on thinking that this was the only location when you were told weekend after weekend by so many people in the city that this wasn't the right site. I want to applaud you tonight, this afternoon, okay, for the fact that you're actually 
choosing maybe to leave this site and to go somewhere else. And I think that the plan that Mr. Selich has to go over to the fire and police station, since we're going to redo the police station anyway, and if we redo the police station, we're going to redo the fire station, so it will be a work in progress. In the museum site, if you run out of space, the museum site near there could be a parking structure in case you run out of sight. So I want to applaud you for what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else wish to have a public comment? Okay, thank you. We're adjourned to closed session. We will re-adjourn for regular meeting at 7. <laughs>